topic in capital budgeting is using depreciation. Now, typically we would use makers, but we're going to just look at straight line depreciation. A makers is an accelerated method that will have a higher present value if the firms have high tax rates and high required returns. But that's for a more advanced course. So let's just look at a simple problem. We've got a company that's looking at a new product that's going to cost $50,000 in the last four years. What depreciation deduction would be allowed using the straight line method? And the idea is you take 50000 divide by 4, 25%, or $12,500 each year. Now, a um, couple other things we need to think about here is that at the end of a project life, we're going to have either a capital gain or loss, and we have a liquidation value. And so we can say, sell a good, like the machine, if there's any left value, market value, minus remaining book value, and there will be a capital gain. The IRS will tax that capital gain, and we look at our sales proceeds minus the tax rate times the capital gain and that will be the market value of the free cash flow from the project at all future dates. So here's another fictional project. It's going to cost us uh, 200000 for some CNC machining station, another 30000 to ship and install, so we'll depreciate all of that. Economic life, four years. At the end of the project life, we can sell that used machine for $25,000. Now, some people refer to that as the salvage value, but we will be um, depreciating down to zero, not to salvage value, so I like to call it sales proceeds of the used machine. So we're going to sell 100,000 units at uh, $2 a unit, increasing our sales per year of 200,000. Unit costs, our cost of goods sold and any selling expenses, will be 60% of our sales price or 120,000 a year, and we're going to need some net operating working capital of 20,000 a year. We can finance the sum of it with accounts payable or increased inventory. Our tax rate is 40%, cost of capital 10%, and I just described that on the previous slide. That's technically net operating working capital because there is no financing costs in this calculation here. So we depreciate based on not just the cost of the machine, but if the shipping and installation are expensive, we depreciate that rather than writing it off. So our depreciation expense each year under straight line is the same, 57.5. And here are our operating cash flows. Now, if you click on my Excel link, you'll see I've got these calculations in there. At the end of the project life, we will sell the machine for $25,000. Now, we've written this down to zero, so this is all a gain. We will be taxed at 40% of that gain, or $10,000. So our net terminal cash flow here will be $15,000, which we will be looking at at the end of the project life. At the end of the project life, we not only will get that 15000 after-tax proceeds from selling the used machine, but we're also getting a recovery of our net operating working capital. And that's really what's happening is the difference between finance and accounting. In accounting, we record um, the expenses when we when we make the revenue under the matching principle. So cost of goods sold won't be recorded under accounting until um, we've got the revenue, but we actually have put a cash outlay out at the beginning. Then in the last period, we're using some beginning inventory, and um, that would be overstating our cost of goods sold. So that's what we call that the recovery of net operating working capital. Now, is there always a tax on sales proceeds? Well, only if we have a gain on sale. So what will be our cash flow? So we said it's 71000 each in our operating cash flows. 
another 35,000 end of project life, or 106,000. We will look at it in the Excel. Um, using our TI-83, we would say that the net present value is you rate 10% minus the year zero cash flow, 250,000, then 71,000, 71,000, 71,000, 106,000, close curly black, close parentheses. If you want to get the present values of each individually, I have that here. Look, our net present value is negative. So after all this, we shouldn't gender take this project. It would decrease our wealth. And indeed, if we calculated internal rate of return, we would see that that is less than our cost of capital, 9.82%. I'm going to click on my Excel link here and show you the Excel, I thought. So let me bring it up again. And here is the Excel. And here is my calculation. Now, if you use um, the Excel to calculate MPV, you actually are using it, remember, to calculate the present value of the cash flows. And then you must subtract that initial expense in year zero. So the MPV is calculated based on the present value of the cash inflows, then subtract the cash outflow. IRR uses all of them. Of course, all the cash flows, including year zero. So that is our calculation with straight line depreciation, finding the net present value of a project. This one was negative, but the method still is useful. Thank you.